A Place Called Home by Lori Wick. Chapter 52. Do you have the ring? Yes, Luke, for the third time I have the ring. Silas was as calm as always, a steady rock in the storm. Did Julia get all of Christine's things moved in? Last night, Christine will bring the last of her things after the ceremony. Does the house look okay? It looks fine. Listen, Si, I've been thinking, and I just don't feel good about you staying with Grandma M. This is your home. I don't want to do anything that will make you feel unwelcome. I know Christine feels the same. Luke! Silas's raised voice stopped Luke's tirade. He never shouted, and Luke stood speechless. I do not feel that you and Christine are kicking me out of the house. It was my idea, and it will only be for two nights. I'll be back Monday. Luke, you are bringing your bride home tonight, and it's her I'm thinking of. The two of you need time alone together, if only for a few days, to start off your marriage on the right foot. Silas's voice was more firm than Luke had ever heard it. Luke was grateful for Silas's words and nodded his agreement. Besides, Silas spoke as he headed out of the house. You're only going to have her until Monday. Come Tuesday morning, she'll get one look at my hairy face and go screaming from the house. The men laughed at the long-standing joke, and the tension evaporated. The two o'clock sun was shining brightly overhead as Silas mounted his horse and Luke climbed into the cutter. They had a wedding to attend. How does it look? You look beautiful, Julia said earnestly. I look ten feet tall and all white, Christine replied with dismay. Julia and Suzanne dissolved into giggles. Both women agreed they had never seen a more radiant bride. The women were in Grandma M's room, and with less than an hour to the three o'clock ceremony, Christine looked about ready to come unglued. She needs to see Luke, Julia said softly. I need my grandfather. Tears filled Christine's eyes as she spoke. He should be here to give me away. And Paul, Paul wasn't able to come, and that's not right. She was becoming frantic. Christine did not notice Sue leave the room, but she was back momentarily and with Grandma M. She and Julia left them alone. Upon seeing Grandma M, Christine burst into tears. Grandma M, drawing wisdom from every one of her seventy years, said nothing, not a word about teardrops on her wedding dress or how close it was to three o'clock. She knew Christine had slept poorly last night and had eaten nothing today. She also remembered how her own father had been too ill to walk her down the aisle and how devastated she had felt over this. I don't know what's wrong with me, Christine finally choked out. I love Luke and I want to marry him. I just don't know what's wrong. Grandma M gently pulled Christine to the desk chair. She then moved the rocker close and began to pray. Dear Father, help Christine. Please draw her near to your throne, where she can find comfort and rest for emotions she herself may not even understand. You know of the love she and Luke have for each other. Calm her nerves and give her a peaceful heart to go down and marry the man she loves. If, Lord, there has been blindness and Luke and Christine are not to be wed, please put your hand down and prevent this marriage. Speak to Christine's heart so she will know your will. We give this day and its glory to you. Amen. Grandma M sat quietly as Christine dried her face. Would you like me to go get Luke? You know he'll come in an instant if you ask him. Christine looked at the clock. 3.10. Do you think he's upset with me? No, probably worried, but not upset. Christine took a deep breath. Will you please send Silas up in about five minutes? I most certainly will. Do you want help with anything? Maybe Julia should come back up. No, I'll be fine. Thanks, Graham. Grandma M didn't miss the use of the nickname that her grandchildren used. She hugged Christine and nearly glowed with happiness as she left the room. Christine stepped before the full-length mirror. Her hair was still in place, swept up in curls atop her head. Her dress was snow-weight satin. The skirt was full and gathered at the waist. Puffed sleeves at the shoulder fit snugly along Christine's arm and buttoned tightly at the waist, or at the wrist. The satin on the bodice was overlaid with handmade lace that ran in a V from the nipped-in waist to a high stand-up collar. The same pearl buttons that buttoned at the wrist ran full length down Christine's back. Luke loved Christine's hair and had asked her not to cover it. Christine was taking a close-up check for signs of tears when Silas knocked. 
Silas kissed her cheek before offering his arm. They paused at the top of the stairs. Are you ready? Christine nodded. Thanks, Sai. Luke stood in the parlor, awaiting his bride. The urge to go to her had been nearly overpowering, but Grandma M had told him that all was fine and that Christine would be down in about five minutes. He didn't care that the ceremony hadn't started on time, or that the kids were getting squirmy. He just wanted to see Christine and know she was all right. The relief he felt upon hearing the rustle of her dress on the stairs, just before she came into view, was poignantly sweet. Nothing could have prepared Luke for the vision of Christine in her wedding dress. He could only stare. Christine's eyes searched his out, and the rest of the room faded from view. Christine remembered little of the ceremony. She would always cherish Luke's eyes as he said, I do, the pressure of his hand holding hers, watching his hand slip the ring onto her finger, and their first kiss as man and wife, tender and warm. Mark and Julia had stood up with them. Pastor Nolan performed the ceremony while Mrs. Nolan played the piano. The parlor was filled with family and friends from church. The reception was well underway. Graham, Julia, and Sue had prepared a feast. When Luke and Christine were finally seated, their plates full, Luke asked, Are you okay? Just an attack of nerves. Are you angry? Furious, Luke stated with a smile. The time flew by, and before long, everyone was at the front door, waving and shouting blessings and good wishes to the newlyweds as the cutter bore them away. The horse's fast pace and the gusty wind made conversation nearly impossible. Christine was starting to feel chilled as they reached the house. Christine was picked up and carried into the front room of the ranch house, then set down and a lamp lit before either person uttered a word. Welcome home, Mrs. Cameron. Christine's face glowed with happiness. I like the sound of that. Luke handed Christine the lamp. Go get warmed up while I take care of the horse. Christine stood a few moments after the door closed behind Luke, smiling at her surroundings. With the lamp in one hand and a small suitcase in the other, Christine headed toward the hallway that led off the dining area. Luke's room, and now hers, was halfway down the hall and at the back of the house. It was a huge room with a massive four-poster bed, a matched set of wardrobes, and the largest bureau that Christine had ever seen. In one corner had been... In one corner, having been stoked that afternoon, burned a wood stove, making the room comfortably warm. Christine had sh Julia had shown Christine through the bedrooms the week before. She ran her hand over the beautiful quilt on the bed. Luke's mother had made it, a mother-in-law that Christine would not know personally, but only through Luke's words and her handiwork here and there in the house. Christine opened the wardrobe door. Seeing her things hanging beside Luke's, gave her a feeling of contentment. She heard a door close and knew that Luke was back. Luke followed the light from Christine's lamp and found her in his bedroom, their bedroom. Upon entering, Luke closed the door and leaned against it. Christine was still in her wedding dress and her hair coming loose around her face. Luke was in his dark suit and crisp white shirt, so tall and handsome. Husband and wife stood in silence regarding each other. Luke spoke from his place at the door. Christine, it's been a long day. I know you're tired, and if you'd rather... Luke halted as Christine moved toward him, her heart swelling with love at how thoughtful he was of her well-being. When she stood directly in front of him, all she could think to say was, I love you, Luke. Luke understood and drew Christine to him, hardly able to believe that a man could be so happy and blessed. Theirs was a love sprung deep from within, willing and able to stand the test of time, come what may, with Christ at the head of their home.